Hi guys, welcome back to another video and today I'll be taking a look at the latest gaming monitor from BenQ. This is the Mobius EX480UZ, which is BenQ's first ever OLED gaming monitor. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. Now this monitor has quite an impressive spec with a 48 inch OLED display. It supports HDMI 2.1, together with having a lightning fast 0.1 millisecond response time and a 120 hertz refresh rate on both consoles and a PC. It has AMD free sync premium and there's even built-in 2.1 channel true sound speakers by Trivolo together with a KVM switch and type C port which supports power delivery. So I'll be taking a closer look at the monitor to see how well it performs when gaming at my desk and on my sim cockpit together with looking at the picture quality and performance as a productivity monitor. Plus I'll be comparing it to the LG Ultra Gear 48 GQ900 which is its closest competitor to see how the two compare in terms of performance, picture quality and gaming. So let's begin by unboxing it and briefly seeing what you get inside the packaging. But before I begin, if you're new to the channel, hope you can support me by subscribing and hitting the bell icon to get notified of my next release. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments section below. In the box, you get some documentation, some screws, a screwdriver, a bag containing some fixtures, a power cable with a UK plug, and a kettle connector, a HDMI 2.1 cable, a USB-A to USB-B cable, another power cable with an EU plug, a USB-C to USB-C cable, a display port cable, the monitor feet, the monitor arm, a cover for the back of the monitor arm, a remote control, and finally the monitor. Looking at the back of the monitor, you have a VESA mount location, that's 200 by 200 millimeters, allowing you to mount the monitor on a wall. But to do this, you have to use these screw-in adapters and then attach the mount onto it. There's four LED lights in each corner. On the left, you have a power input that takes a kettle connector, and on the back, you have the Mobius branding and a Kensington locking point. On the far right, you have the connection ports, which consists of two USB 3.2 downstream ports, one USB-B upstream port, one USB Type-C port, a display port 1.4, two HDMI 2.1 ports, an SPDIF port used for digital audio, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Underneath you have a power button and some controls allowing you to navigate around the OSD with a joystick. Towards the middle, there's a 10 watt subwoofer, the monitor isn't the lightest monitor, weighing around 19 kilos, so the instructions suggest attaching the monitor stand first when it's in the box and then lifting it out. The process is pretty simple, place the monitor arm into position, then screw down each of the corners with the screws and screwdriver provided, clip in the back plate and then attach the feet and tighten with a screw at the bottom. You can then lift it out of the packaging and place it on your table. Now looking at the front of the monitor, which is black with an almost bezel-less three-sided design with a larger lower area that has two 5 watt speakers on either side. It has a BenQ logo on one side and a HDRI logo on the other with a small button underneath allowing you to switch between the different HDR modes. The monitor stand is metallic and has two orange stripes along the front of it with a good build quality. The only adjustment you can do is tilt it up and down from minus two degrees to 15 degrees. You can't adjust the height or swivel it. And at this size, you wouldn't really want to do that. The OLED panel has an anti-glare matte finish rather than a glossy mirror-like screen, which helps in reducing eye strain, making it more usable in bright environments. And looking from one side, you can see how thin the panel is at the top and the lower part is much thicker as it contains all the circuitry and connection ports. Now I've connected the monitor to my Xbox Series X and looking at the settings, you can see everything is checked other than Dolby vision for gaming and looking in video modes allow auto low latency is disabled but that's fine as it's already in the lowest latency mode as it's optimized for gaming so this means that games that support 120 hertz at 4k will be supported by this monitor and with the added feature of variable refresh rate or vrr on the xbox series x s and playstation 5 giving an awesome gaming experience i've been using this monitor for about a week now on both my xbox series x and playstation 5 and the gaming experience is awesome colors are vibrant and very sharp with inky blacks with the 98 percent dci p3 oled panel you have hdri giving clear and realistic details together with a color depth of 1.07 billion colors and performance from the monitor is awesome giving a smooth crystal clear gaming experience with no stuttering or screen tearing even in fast scenes the quality is excellent and being an OLED monitor dark scenes are excellent with blacks being true inky blacks unlike an IPS panel where you would see some light bleed gaming at my desk feels really immersive on the 48 inch covering your entire field of vision 
And with the 0.1 millisecond response time, the monitor is perfect in terms of performance, especially in FPS games where you need that fast response time to react. But if you did find the screen a bit too big in certain games, you do have the ability to reduce the display down in increments to a minimum of 22 inches, but still maintaining the 4K resolution, which could be useful in some games. This gives you the option to play games on a smaller screen if you didn't want such a large area to focus on, and then flip back to 48 inches when playing a role-playing game for example. It supports HDR10 with a native contrast of 135,000 to 1. It has brightness levels of 450 nits but on Windows 11 it was reporting 427 nits but either way it's still brighter than an LG C1 OLED that produces around 409 nits of brightness. Viewing angles are excellent giving perfect vision at 178 degrees in all directions and light bleed is non-existent on this as you can see here. Onto sim racing and I've attached a monitor onto my sim cockpit which is from Next Level Racing. This is the GT Elite and I'll be using my Logitech G Pro wheel. The monitor feels pretty good as the 48 inch screen gives you that real immersive experience when racing providing good screen coverage giving every detail in your peripheral vision. Plus there's no screen tearing giving really smooth visuals making it a better option than an OLED TV so perfect for sim racing. Eye care wise there's flicker free technology, low blue light, brightness intelligence plus which automatically adjusts the brightness and color temperature on the display color weakness and e-paper all aimed at reducing eye strain my desk is 140 centimeters wide by 70 centimeters deep and with the 48 inch monitor on there it does feel pretty big literally taking up my entire field of vision but having a desk any smaller would feel too close so for the best experience you'd want a desk which is a minimum of 70 to 80 centimeters deep the monitor has amd FreeSync premium for smooth gameplay which is perfect for the xbox series x and playstation 5 supporting the full bandwidth of 48 gigabits with no reduction of picture quality then there's the display port which is ideal for PC gamers allowing you to get 4K at 120Hz on a gaming PC but obviously this is dependent on your graphics card. I've got a custom built PC from CyberPower which I've used to test this monitor and it has an insane spec with an Intel i9 13900K processor, RTX 4090 graphics card, 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM, a 2TB M.2 SSD and it has CyberPower's Hyperliquid dual loop custom cooling system and gaming on my PC with the Mobius EX480UZ is awesome in 4K with a fast response time and picture quality is smooth together with being sharp. It also has all of BenQ's HDR color modes which auto optimizes color tones and details so you can get the best option for you. The monitor has optimized HDRI with brightness and light tuner, but it also features a color vibrance option in both game and cinema HDRI modes, allowing you to fine tune color tones with 20 color temperature gradations. Using the monitor with a PC for your productivity needs is great as the large screen gives an immense area to work from, allowing you to easily have multiple documents open side by side and perfect for video editing too. I had my Windows PC on a 125% scale and productivity wise it was perfect but worth mentioning the pixels per inch isn't that high at just 92 ppi so if you look close up you will notice a little bit of frigging but sitting back in my chair you can hardly notice it. It also has a built in KVM so you could have a PC plugged into the USB B upstream port and a Mac mini plugged in via the type C port and with this you're able to flip between the two seamlessly allowing you to use the same keyboard and mouse on both. You could also connect a laptop via the type C port and charge it as it has 90 watt power delivery but obviously this depends on your laptop if it supports this functionality. The monitor also has picture in picture that makes it possible to view two input sources at the same time and it also supports picture by picture. There's two 5 watt speakers at the front together with a 10 watt subwoofer underneath. You have five sound mode presets for different audio modes as you can see here on the screen each one sounding different from each other so for example FPS brings up the mids and highs for clearer footsteps racing games has an elevated low to mid range so you can hear the engine roll and rumble and for an OLED monitor with such a thin panel the sound quality is excellent compared to most monitors out there giving some depth and it does go quite loud I'd say you wouldn't need separate speakers as these are pretty good but it can't replace using a gaming headset that would give you more of a surround sound experience and to give you a rough idea of the quality have a listen to this
As the monitor has multiple HDMI ports together with excellent speakers, you could also just plug in an Amazon Fire Stick if you didn't want to use your PC or console for streaming services. And you also have HDMI CEC that allows you to control multiple HDMI connected devices from one remote. So a perfect all round monitor covering gaming, productivity and streaming. At the back, you've got four RGB lights, one in each corner of the monitor. This can be controlled via the OSD menu, allowing you to turn them on and off, select different static colors, and even cycle between different effects. It looks pretty cool and does give some ambient lighting, but it gives just very low level of lighting in each of the four corners, which reflects off the wall behind. But it's hardly noticeable when the monitor is on, making it a bit pointless, to be honest. They should have really made the LEDs a lot brighter with a brightness control to be able to really make use of it. The power button also has an LED on it which can be turned off via the menu and I like this idea as it gives a quick reference point to where the button is without touching the monitor. The OSD is good and you can navigate quite easily around the menus. There's some useful presets and options like contrast enhancement and low blue light mode. There's also scenario mapping when you plug in your games console and it just self adjusts to the current video input signal and loads your personalized game settings. You can access different game scenarios quickly by switching the input without wasting time or readjusting settings. And personally, I really like the fact they give a remote control. It's nice and compact and gives you quick access to the options on the monitor without messing around with the controls underneath the screen. Now, this monitor does come with a three year warranty, which is good, especially as one of the biggest concerns with OLEDs is the screen burning or image retention. This is where an image is permanently displayed onto the screen. To protect against this, the monitor does have some OLED care options. First of all, you have orbit, which moves the screen slightly at regular intervals to prevent image sticking and then there's off RS and what this does as time goes by the current driving the OLEDs will become uneven and what off RS does is recalibrate all the OLEDs to default status. Next we have JB so with OLED panels the luminance performance will differ after a while of usage and the JB process can eliminate the luminance gap between OLEDs and finally there's ZFD which stands for zero frame delay which helps reduce input lag when it's enabled. Now as a comparison to the LG 48 GQ 900 OLED monitor, which I've also reviewed and is a direct competitor to this monitor. And to give you some details about both these monitors, I've created a table comparing the spec. Looking at the table, you can see there's very minimal differences between the two. Both are good all round monitors, so you can use them for console and PC gaming together with productivity and streaming. With both being a 4K monitor with HDR10 and having a 0.1 millisecond response time and both have speed and can be controlled via a remote control. However, on a PC, you can overclock the refresh rate on the LG monitor to 138 Hz, whereas BenQ's refresh rate is limited to 120 Hz. But if you're gaming on a console, you wouldn't be able to go higher than 120 Hz. And in all honesty, the extra 18 Hz isn't really going to make that much of a difference on a PC. Design wise, both monitors look really good with LG having more of a cleaner style due to the four sided bezel-less design. But with BenQ, you have a larger chin as it houses two speakers at the front together with a subwoofer. Connectivity wise, BenQ's has the added benefit of a USB-C port with a 90 watt power delivery and a built-in KVM switch. You have picture in picture and picture by picture. Plus you can change the display mode size from 48 inches down to 22 inches, whereas LG doesn't offer this. On picture quality, as both are OLED panels, they both display vibrant and sharp picture quality with inky blacks. And in all honesty, gaming on both of these is very similar in picture quality and contrast levels. But to note, there are more options available on BenQ's monitor for HDRI, providing more intelligent on-screen adjustments with clear and realistic detail together with optimized HDRI featuring brightness, light tuner, and a color vibrance option, allowing you to enhance game visuals. Plus BenQ's looks slightly more brighter as brightness on the monitor is 450 nits compared to 330 nits on the LG monitor. And BenQ gives eye protection, reducing eye strain when gaming for long periods. So in summary, I'm really impressed with the new Mobius EX480UZ 4K OLED gaming monitor from BenQ. Positives wise, the anti glare display panel coating is excellent allowing you to use a monitor in a bright room with eye care technology to help reduce 
fatigue and eye strain. Plus with the OLED panel, you'll get those perfect black levels, which you can tune with a light tuner to be a bit brighter or a little bit darker to show more or less detail, depending upon the level of detail you want. Then you have the type C port with a power delivery of 90 watts together with a built-in KVM switch. It has excellent sound quality from the built-in speakers and subwoofer and a really immersive gaming experience if you didn't want to use headphones. It has a display port 1.4, which is optimized for gaming on a PC and something that isn't available on an OLED TV. And I like the fact that you can adjust the screen size from 48 inches down to 22 inches by using the picture modes option, which can be useful when playing FPS games. Negatives wise, it's not cheap, coming in at just under $1,800 or £1,600, which isn't cheap when compared to an OLED TV. But you've got to remember, this is optimized for gaming. And if you are used to gaming at a higher refresh rate on a PC, like more than 165 hertz, this won't be the best experience as the maxima even on a gaming PC is just 120 hertz. But overall, this is a really good monitor that ticks a lot of boxes for gaming, productivity, and streaming your movies or TV shows. There's lots of customization, so you can tweak and tune the settings to your own needs. So there you have it. You've come to the end of another video and I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. And if you're still here, drop a BenQ48 in the comments as it's nice to see who's made it to the end of my video. You can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook and Twitter. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be notified of my next release. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.